Hi, I'm Shannon from Simply for Strings. I'm a luthier and multi-instrumentalist who has over a decade of experience performing and teaching. Today I'll be showing you a comprehensive method and way to look after your instrument at home. So I'm going to go over a few things that you'll need at home in order to perform this service. The first one is a microfiber cloth. We recommend one of the Simply for Strings, which is a special microfiber we've sourced that is perfect for the job. You'll also need some fine steel wool, some peg paste, a cleaning agent. We use old wood cream with silver ions, which is antibacterial. A rosin remover, we use pets. Some machine oil to use as a lubricant. And something to polish your instrument, we use vial polish. If you want to be a little bit fancier and treat your instrument that little bit more, we also have an ebony polish produced by Old Wood. Always be mindful when using cleaning products. When you're finished, make sure you screw the caps back on, avoid touching your face, and wash your hands thoroughly when you finish. If you're looking to really freshen up your sound, now is also the perfect time to change your strings. We recommend that you have your instrument looked at by a professional luthier. These are specialist makers and repairers of string instruments. This will make sure that it lasts for years to come. Follow along with our simple steps. Feel free to pause the video, take your time and just enjoy the journey. So first we're gonna start with a general health check. Now it's really important to do this regularly to make sure that your instrument is working as it should. The first thing we're gonna do is check for any open seams or cracks in the body of the instrument. So first we're gonna visually inspect all of the open seams along the ribs to see if we can see anything open. We're then gonna go around and gently tap the purfling like this. If we hear any hollow taps, that could be an open seam and it could be the source of any buzzing you may have heard. If your instrument is still buzzing and there are no open seams or cracks, make sure you check the chin rest. There should be no movement and it should be nice and firm. If you're still finding buzzing, book in your instrument with your local luthier to have it checked out professionally. Now with everyday playing, we're gonna get some buildup of sweat and dirt and grime and rosin on the strings. So look at them really carefully. We're looking for any inconsistencies like unraveling or thick buildup of rosin, which will stop the string vibrating properly. If your strings are quite damaged and dirty, now is the time to change them. If you haven't changed them in over a year, this is probably also a really good time. Now we're gonna check the bridge. The bridge gets ignored a lot, but it's really important. So first we're gonna look at it from the side. We're gonna make sure that it's straight and it's not bending or warping. As we tune, the strings actually pull the bridge up towards the scroll. This can actually pull the bridge with it. If you notice that your bridge is leaning to one side, it's very easy to fix, don't be afraid. Place it between your fingers and very gently pull it back into position until it's standing at a 90 degree angle. Now you'll know the bridge is in the right spot when the feet fit perfectly with the top of the violin without any gaps. Now that you've performed your health check, it's time to start cleaning. We're gonna start with the strings. Now if you're like me and you play a lot, there's gonna be a lot of rosin buildup. So we want to remove that. You're gonna need a pet rosin remover and a microfiber cloth. Place a small amount of the solution onto your cloth and we're going to start rubbing the strings and the fingerboard, making sure we don't touch the actual varnished body of the instrument. This will dissolve and remove the rosin from the strings. Once you're happy with how clean the strings are, it's time to move on to the fingerboard. When you're cleaning your fingerboard at home, we recommend doing it by removing two strings only at a time. This is to make sure that the bridge and sound post don't fall down. I'm going to start with the upper two strings and I'm going to loosen off the strings at the pegs. I'm gonna completely remove them. Once you've taken off the top two strings, we're gonna take our steel wool and our old wood Italian cream. Put a little bit onto your steel wool and we're gonna rub it on the bare wood up and down the fingerboard, like this. You will know you finished with the fingerboard when it looks smooth without any spots or finger marks. When the fingerboard is now nice and clean without any blemishes, we can move on to the next step. Now, if you wanna give your instrument a bit of extra love, this is an optional step, but it's also my favorite. 
So we're going to now polish the wood and I'm going to use old wood ebony polish. So I'm going to apply just little dabs directly onto the wood using the same steel wool that we used before. Once again, we're going to rub it up and down the fingerboard. Keep doing this for a little while, say about 30 seconds. It will look a bit gritty, but that's okay. Take your soft cleaning cloth again, and now is when we start polishing. We're gonna vigorously rub up and down, and the more you do it, the more of a shine you'll start to see. When you're happy with the shine, you can stop. Once you're happy with the shine you've produced, we're gonna move on to some maintenance of the pegs. Now we wanna make sure that these run really smoothly and hold in tune and don't slip. We're gonna take out one peg at a time. The reason we do this is we don't wanna mix up the pegs. Each peg is perfectly fitted only to one hole. Take your steel wool and just run it around the peg. Then take your soft cloth, give it another rub. Then we're gonna take our peg paste. We recommend Hill's Peg Paste. This is a smooth compound which we apply just to the areas which are gonna to touch the wood. This will help the peg to run smoothly. Place the peg back into the peg box and give it a few turns. Repeat that with the other peg. If you play a double bass, you're gonna have metal machine heads instead of ebony pegs. So here's where you take your sewing machine oil. You're gonna apply a drop directly onto the machine head and turn the tuning key until it moves freely. If the tuning key turns without any resistance, then you know you've done it correctly. If your instrument has fine tuners on the tower piece, now's when we're gonna lubricate those. Unscrew them one at a time. Once you've unscrewed one, take your oil and apply it to the screw. I'm gonna add just a drop with my finger. I screw it back into the towel piece. If you've done it properly, it should screw in with ease. Repeat this with the other fine tuners. We're now ready to place the strings back on. Once you've done this, you finish the first half and you can repeat the process on the other side with the lower two strings. With all four strings reattached, we're now ready to move on to the body. Now with regular playing, the body of the violin gets very dirty. Usually it's built up rosin, but also fingerprint marks from our hands. We're gonna remove that. We're gonna take our old wood Italian cream and our microfiber cloth. I'm gonna apply a small amount to the cloth. I'm gonna start cleaning the varnish in circular motions with the cloth using very gentle pressure. I don't want to apply too much pressure or it may actually damage the varnish. Make sure that you get underneath the strings and underneath the fingerboard. Continue the same over the entire body of the instrument. Don't forget to do the scroll. When all the rosin has been removed and it's shiny and there's no fingerprints, you know it's done. If at any point during the cleaning process, you can't get the grime off and the rosin is still stuck there, then it's a good idea to stop and take it to your local luthier to get cleaned professionally. Now we're going to clean the chin rest. Now it is the most contact with our body and probably gets the dirtiest. So it's a good idea to use something like the Italian old wood cream, which actually has antibacterial properties. We're going to do the same process of just rubbing in circular soft motions until all the grime has been removed. Now we get to give our violin that final sparkle. We're going to give it a polish with a specialist violin oil. We use Vial. I apply a very small amount to a soft cloth. I can then rub it in large circular motions over the entirety of the varnish. Continue this all over the varnish, back, sides and front to give you that really beautiful shine. You can do this until you're happy with the polish. By now your violin should be looking beautiful and shiny. So we're going to finish it off just by giving it a final check over. I'm going to check the bridge again, make sure there's no other fingerprints, and once I'm happy, it's time to put it away. We're going to place the violin back in its case. Whenever we place our violin back in its case, it's always important to do it very gently to avoid damaging any of the sensitive corners. Tighten the strap. That's going to make sure it doesn't fall out. We're now going to quickly check our bow. To release your bow, turn the bow spinner. It should come out easily. Using a clean section of your cloth, wipe down the wood of the bow. 
Remember to only ever touch the wood and not the hair. When you've wiped off all the rosin, it should be ready for the next step. Check that your screw is nice and smooth and not stuck. If you find it doesn't release, you may need to take it to your luthier to be checked. When putting the bow away, it is very important to always make sure that the hair is loosened. Place the bow back in, making sure the tip is in its slot. Turn the spinner to hold it in place. Close the lid. Most importantly, close the case, zip it up, or use locks if you have them. If you'd like to learn more about your instrument, check out our website at simplyforstrings.com.au. Thanks for watching.